Reports say that more than 50 people in Sudan have been killed so far as security forces crack down on anti-government protests. Hundreds of others are said to have been injured as demonstrations continue in Sudan's major cities, including the capital Khartoum. The protests were triggered by an economic crisis in the country, but quickly escalated into calls for President Omar el-Bashir to step down. Security forces responded by violently cracking down on the protests, killing dozens of people and injuring many others. VOA's Naba Mohaidin brings us the story of Mohammed Masri, one of the Sudanese who was almost killed in the brutal crackdown by the security forces. Masri lost his right hand, but that injury has not deterred him from continuing to march, making Masri an inspiration to many other protesters who continue to present one of the main challenges to President al-Bashir's nearly 30-year rule. 20-year-old student Muhammad Masri joined the December protest at the University of Khartoum over the government's handling of the economy. When police fired tear gas to break up the protest, Masri picked up a canister that landed near him on the ground. It exploded in his hand. I remember a loud sound. I was standing by a wall. Once I opened my eyes, I saw parts dropping from my hand. When we arrived at the hospital, doctors immediately chopped my hand like this. While recovering from his injury, Masri, in a Facebook post, urged protesters not to give up. Thousands responded, promising Masri they would not let him down. Masri has inspired thousands of young people with his resistance. His injury didn't affect his actions. We already lost what can't be compensated. We don't have any choice but to keep protesting. Authorities shut down the universities, and activists say at least 57 people have been killed in three months of protest scenes, including students. The government say it will investigate claims that security use excessive force. Yes, the demonstrations resulted in injuries in both protesters and on the police side for many reasons. The protests were unauthorized and protesters put up fences and locked down streets. There are ongoing investigations into the injuries of protesters as well as police and other security forces. There are no results yet, but we're expecting them in the coming days. The protests were sparked over the government's response to a bread shortage, a sudden tripling of the price. Sudan was already suffering 70% inflation and fuel scarcity. The protests turned into calls for the end of the president, Omar al-Bashir's nearly three decades in power. As youth, we're looking for a better life. We have many demands. We can postpone studying for now. It's not a big deal. Our future can be restored, but the country's future can't be delayed. After he recovered, Masri organized a protest in his hometown, Abri, attracting hundreds of supporters. He says a top hunt won't stop anyone who has a will to see change in Sudan. Naba Muhyiddin for VON News, Khartoum.